In this video, we study some more insights to what is inverse of a function and what are inverses of some standard functions and how does inverse basically affect the domain and range. So let's get started with some functions and their inverses and we learn some new things out of this. Suppose I have the first function given to me as x square. This is the function. And what is the domain and the range of the function? The domain and the range of this function is given to me as 0 to infinity is the domain and so is the range. It is also 0 to infinity. Now what is the inverse of x square? The inverse of x square is computed and then we will be writing the result. So let's compute it first separately and then we'll write the result separately. So the inverse of any function, suppose I have y is equal to x square, that means fx is equal to x square. So in the procedure to find the inverse, we have to compute the value of x first. So if y is equal to x square, what is x? x is nothing but under root of y. When we have the consideration that it is only 0 to infinity, that means only positive. Right? So in the positive interval, x is equal to under root of y. And if x is equal to under root of y, what I can do is, I can replace x by f inverse y. This is a new point in the inverse of function that always you can replace x as f inverse y. Now when you replaced x by f inverse y, the right hand side doesn't change it is under root of y only. So if you want to find the inverse in y, the answer stops here. The solution stops here. This is your answer. But if you have to find the inverse in x, so finding the inverse in x will be what? It will just be the substitution of y to x. So y to x here and y to x here as well. So the answer gets f inverse x is equal to under root x. So understood the technique to follow the find the inverse? For finding the inverse what do we do? We substitute wherever we have y as x in the last step. But in the initial steps what do we have to do? We have to compute what is the value of x. The value of x is under root y. x can always be replaced by f inverse y and likewise. Now writing the answer to this solution in the table is also necessary. So for fx is equal to x square, the inverse is what? The inverse is under root x. Under root x is what? It is my inverse which is written as f inverse x. And what is the change in the domain and the range? I want to make it clear. We have the first thing as domain. We know that. And the second thing as range or codomain why range or codomain? Because inverse is only possible in 1, 1, on 2 functions and in on 2 function range is always equal to codomain. So what happens in inverse that the inverse of a function has a range interchanged with codomain. That means since these are both equal we don't have any effect. Otherwise what will happen is the range will become the domain and the domain will become the range. So no change for this problem at least. In the next example, let's see what change follows. Suppose I have the second as a trigonometric function, fx is equal to sin x. Sine of x is a trigonometric function. And you know, sine of x would always have the value ranging from minus 1 to 1. So the domain and the range is what? Minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. This is our domain which is denoted as D and the range is what? The range is minus 1 to 1, inclusive of both, minus 1 to 1. Now sin x inverse is what? We have already read that inverse of sin x, f inverse x is written as sin inverse x. That means if the function was sin x, now the inverse is sin inverse x. And what is the change in the domain and the range? 
the domain becomes the range the range becomes the domain so that means the domain and the range are changed now my function would now map from minus 1 to 1 to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 now the next example can be taken of cosine x or cos x when we have already understood what is the example of sin x it will be easy to know what is the example of cos x this is the range this is the domain in the previous thing now fx is equal to cos x for cos x we have the domain and range as what the domain is nothing but 0 to pi and the range is again minus 1 to 1 now having understood the example of sine and sine inverse x you will be easily by yourself able to write down what is the inverse of cos x so the inverse of cos x is nothing but cos inverse x so here i can write it down the inverse of cos x f inverse x is equal to cos inverse x what is the change in the range what is the change in the domain they just get interchange that is it so the domain 0 to pi 0 to pi becomes my range and the range becomes my domain so the function now is minus 1 to 1 mapping to 0 to pi it can also be seen in few books that they don't write here f they write f inverse so it is one and the same thing it is better to keep writing it at f it is not incorrect so in this video what did we see we saw basically three standard type of functions and we understood what is the effect on domain and range when we take up the inverse of any function